Let's talk about another really cool thing happening. So I have an AMD GPU and I run the open source AMD GPU drivers because that's what you do on Linux. You use the open source drivers because they're just better. On Nvidia, you use the proprietary drivers because they're just better. And on Intel, they're just open source. So you don't really have a choice and they're good. Like Intel's drivers have basically always been good. But one thing that's always been a little bit hit and miss on the Linux desktop is OpenCL. Now, OpenGL, you've probably heard of. OpenGL, is it Open Graphics Language? Is that what it stands for? If it's not Open Graphics Language, someone is going to correct me on that. Um, anyway, OpenGL is like the sort of the standard on the Linux desktop for doing graphics and things like that. Vulkan is also very popular, but Vulkan you usually see in the context of, uh, of gaming. So... OpenGL is great, but when we're talking about compute operations, like offloading your spreadsheet onto your GPU, uh, GPU vi uh, 3D modeling, uh, processing raw photography, things like this, or um, did I say video editing? I didn't. If I didn't say video editing, video editing, like DaVinci Resolve very heavily relies on OpenCL. For these tasks, you want to be using OpenCL, which I'm gonna guess stands for Open Compute Language. Open Computing Language. Okay, close enough. And the problem that we've had with the AMD drivers is AMD's open source drivers don't have an OpenCL implementation. I don't know why AMD, just for their consumer cards, doesn't really care. I, I really don't know. Because that's one of the major things that AMD is missing on Linux. The other thing is a, like a graphical, um, what do you call it? Like a, a GP, not GP, man. Like, you know how NVIDIA has, a control panel. NVIDIA has their, their control panel even on Linux. But AMD doesn't have a control panel. The only control panels that exist are like third-party applications, which are good, but they're not a first-party, uh, first-party solution. So, I want to use OpenCL. Now, on NVIDIA, with their proprietary drivers, you can use OpenCL. Like, it's got OpenCL built into it. Novo doesn't. So, if you're using Novo for some fucking reason, uh, you didn't have OpenCL. Intel, by default, doesn't have OpenCL. But they have their... I want to say it's the Intel Compute Runtime Stack. Uh, they've had different implementations in the past, but I want to say... Yeah, the Intel Compute Runtime Stack, which you can find the source code for over on the GitHub here, right th right here. And it's not packaged on every distribution, but you can get it installed basically anywhere if you try hard enough. Either way, though, it is a pain in the ass to get set up. It's just extra work that needs to be done. In comes Rusty CL. So the Mesa project has been, I guess not even the Mesa project, like one crazy developer was like, hey, I'm gonna, <laughs> like, this is so stupid. The, the reason why we have now have a um, OpenCL Rust implementation. I wanted to learn Rust and was thinking, why not implement OpenCL in it inside Mesa and see how nice it would be to use Rust inside Mesa. He wasn't like an experienced Rust developer. He's like, I want to learn the language. I'm going to implement OpenCL. Now, as you may have spotted there. Oh, God, why did we jump ahead? Uh, as you probably spotted here, it has been merged. Now, the reason why it got merged is because Carol Herbst isn't just some like random crazy Rust shill. He is certainly a Rust shill. Um, but he's also very experienced, not only in the Mesa project, but also heavily developed Novo, uh, heavily has developed a lot of the other OpenCL implementations, like Clover, for example, and sort of is very, very well established in the Linux graphics stack, and has a good understanding of what's going on inside of it. But this, uh, this got opened up about eight months ago, and pretty much... You know, for quite a while here, there was nothing in regards to like, you know, hey, don't do this in Rust, Rust bad. Uh, there was eventually a comment from... Where is the guy? Uh, somewhere here. 
Prince that Francisco Jerez, who two months ago was trying he made like a giant thread here with a bunch of other people being like, no, we're actually gonna be doing this. He was the only person in the entire thread that was like trying to block this merger. Everyone else was like, no, it's it's gonna happen. Actually, you might have spotted one familiar face in there. Uh here we go. Look, it's Lena. Wow, it's Lena. Um also Alyssa's over here. Anyway. Um, yeah, so we're getting a Rust implementation OpenCL. Now, we did already have a Mesa, op uh, a Mesa Rust implementation, a uh, Mesa OpenCL implementation called Clover. Now, the problem with Clover is kind of twofold. One, it didn't support newer versions of OpenCL. Main problem. And the main problem there is... Uh, <laughs> The main problem with that is it uh, didn't have developers. So OpenC um, Clover was written in C++. Now, C++ is a language that you either love or you hate. And it turns out that everybody inside the Mesa project kind of hates it, except this one guy. So no one was developing it. And this was, you know, trying out C++. Now Dave Varley, the guy who's basically uh, running that aspect of the project, pretty much was like, you know what? It's a failed experiment. Let's try out something new. So we have this new implementation by Carol, <coughs> by Carol, and it's written in Rust. Now, m sort of Francisco's biggest concern here is because it's written in Rust, it sort of shares that same concern that uh, Clover has, except he doesn't admit that Clover had that problem. Like, he's aware that Clover had that problem and uses, like, uh, uses Rust, in the case of uh, Rust DCL, as, like, th the same example, and everyone's just like, that's the same thing. Um, the difference, I think, with Rust DCL is right now there is a lot of attention around Rust. There is a lot of young developers, a lot of really talented developers, who are very, very heavily active in Rust. Not only, like, not only Lena, but, like, a bunch of other people involved in the Mesa project are really interested in seeing where Rust goes. Now, maybe, you know, five, ten years from now, Rust is a dead language that nobody cares about. But I don't see that being the case. Like, with... Google adopting Rust. I think, I think, um, I think Windows is adopt or Microsoft is adopting Rust in some case. Uh, but I know that Google is definitely adopting it for use in uh, Android. I don't see Rust like disappearing. I think Rust is going to be one of these like major, major languages up there with things like C. It might end up being like COBOL, where you know. There's a lot of code written in it, but no developers working in it. Uh, but I hope that it doesn't really go that way. The, the, the reason why I think it's going to be different is I've been hearing about Rust long before anybody cared about Rust. Like, I knew about Rust back with, like, Rust 0.2. There were people in my university that were shilling Rust back then. Nobody was using it. It wasn't used in any major projects. It was already being shilled. <laughs> I think Rust is going to be like the systems language for the, the Zoomers, the systems language for the next generation of programmers, and it's going to keep growing and growing and growing, and we'll see how it sort of goes in in the Linux kernel as well, because the Linux kernel now has, um, now has the basic Rust support, and I've not heard anything about it since then which is a good thing, which means it's not doing anything great, but it's not doing anything so bad that Linus gets really, really angry, which is good, which is very good, because we don't want Linus to be angry, we want Linus to be, um, <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen Linus happy, but content, accepting of the Rust language in the Linux kernel. But, um, the other implementation of uh, OpenCL that you could use with AMD was called Rock'em. And Clover also shared an issue with this one. Uh, the problem with Rock'em is the device support. I'm pretty sure 
that Rockham doesn't support RDNA cards. I could be mistaken there. Uh, Linux, Rockham, RDNA. Uh, or does it support RDNA 1 cards? I, I did hear something about RDNA. Uh, okay, here we go. Let's check <clears throat> the Radeon Open Compute. Uh, this was back in 2020. Will Rockham support RDNA 2 architecture when it is released in the future? Uh, AMD should support both RDNA 1 and RDNA 2. Otherwise, people such as myself will have to hop back to NVIDIA after being uh, getting burned by the 57, uh, 5700 XT. Uh, did AMD ever respond here? Okay, apparently RDNA 1 works. Oh, RDNA 2 apparently does work? Uh, or did it ever, or wait, did it just never get merged? Because I've heard very recently that it doesn't work with RDNA 2. Uh, uh, by the looks of it, it never actually got completed. Yeah, it looks like there were issues with it, and it's sort of just like, nothing really happened with it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it isn't spamming, it's clarification. You can't tell me that I hate AMD, considering I purchased an RX 560 and RT, I guess RX 67, uh, 6600 XT, and developed DL primitives that fully support AMD. I just deeply disappointed the level of AMD commitment for deep learning world. Yeah, so by the looks of it, um, they never actually completed it. And it's sort of just like, nothing's really going on. Which is great. Everybody loves that. Yay. <laughs> oh, Lord. But it's still getting developed. So maybe it does and it's just not properly listed. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm not seeing anything clear about that. I could be wrong. Okay, apparently it does now support RDNA 2 as of a year ago? Uh, wait, does it support it or doesn't support it? Oh, wait. Wait, it... Oh, it doesn't support the consumer class cards. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it supports um it supports some of the compute cards. So the things that nobody outside of like data centers and crazy shit like that actually uh actually use. Yay. Good system. I love it. If I'm wrong about Rockham and it does support RDNA 2. Uh, please do let me know. Uh, like, properly support RDNA 2. Like, consumer class cards, not, like, data center nonsense. Uh, please do let me know. But... Uh, was there... But also, the, the, other, the other problem with Rockham is, from my understanding, it's also a pain in the ass to set up. And like with the Intel compute stack... Uh, also just not packaged everywhere. So, yeah. With the case of, uh, Rusty CL, it being in Mesa, pretty much it's just going to work. Now, there is some tweaking that still needs to be done over on the, the open source Radeon driver side, but when that's dealt with, then it's good. You're good to go.